Now, the top story. Even as the Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dami reached Uttarakhand's sinking town, Joshimat, on Saturday to assess the situation following the collapse of a temple and several houses and ordered the immediate evacuation of around 600 families, NDTV has accessed several letters which were written by the residents of Joshimat to the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand, Pushkar Dami, informing him about the cracks and landslides due to blasts under NTPC tunnels. These letters were written in December 2022, informing the administration about the initial cracks, but the government never responded. Today, we saw the chief minister visit the region to assess the situation and even uh, led to the immediate removal of about uh, 600 residents from their homes from this area. In fact, we have, uh, NDTV has exclusively accessed uh, three letters which were written by the residents of Joshi Mutt informing Pushkar Dhami, who is the Chief Minister of Uttarakhand, and very clearly saying in their subject that the blasts which are happening at the, under the NTPC tunnels, NTPC is just about uh, a kilometer from Joshi Mutt, uh, and the residents have informed the Chief Minister three times in the past, in December and November 2022, that due to those blasts, the entire land is actually shaking and they are, the houses are uh, witnessing the initial cracks. That was the first time in December last year. It was the first time when the houses, Joshimat, for the first time ever in their history, started to have cracks on the houses. The residents immediately wrote to the chief minister informing him about the situation on the ground. Then a second letter was again written on the 25th, uh, 4th of December, informing uh, the chief minister uh, once again by the residents that the situation is becoming graver by the day. Cracks are becoming wide, uh, you know, wider and more more cracks and uh, fissures are in fact developing on the hotels, in the roadways and in the houses as well. But all the three times uh, there was no reply by the government. Obviously the, the letters were received but there was never any action which was taken by the government. Of course today uh, now that the situation is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the situation is such that the entire town of Joshimad, which is a sacred town of our country, it's on the brink of completely breaking down. We, we saw a temple which completely collapsed after it uh, developed features years almost Lara, all the houses in the town have massive cracks and the houses are sinking owing to which uh, the residents of this area in this kind of a brutal winter brutal cold in Joshima they are spending their nights on the streets and hotels are tilting so you can imagine the situation and now the, the chief minister is saying that we will we are going to rehabilitate these families and some of the families have been shifted to safer locations but the question is that the, these families have spent their entire savings their entire lifetime building that one house building that one hotel how are they going to compensate for that property and th this is not the first time that the government uh, you know e e government has been uh, warned of this kind of a situation they were in the past have been warned about the NTPC blasts about uh, the land uh, you know the landslides and about the cracks had the government taken any action in the past maybe as you rightly said we wouldn't be seeing this kind of a situation where there is a danger of the entire Joshima town uh, sinking but here we are today and once again we are seeing that the government did not take any action when they should have taken and now we have come to a point where there where a very sensitive region which is very close to the india china border which connects to very important religious places badrinath and the Himkun sahib and which is a very fragile zone being a zone 5 seismic zone very highly pr uh, prone to earthquake that kind of an area is now on the brink of a gradual sinking the government maybe should have uh, taken some action but clearly they have not and the other big story, the Mumbai man, Shankar Mishra, who urinated on an elderly woman while drunk on an Air India flight in November, has been sent to 14 days judicial custody. Mishra was arrested late on Friday night by the Delhi police from Bengaluru on a New York to Delhi Air India flight on the 26th of November. Shankar Mishra allegedly unzipped his pants and urinated on an elderly woman in business class. The American financial services company that he worked at has also terminated him, saying that these allegations are deeply disturbing. And Air India has now taken action against four cabin crew and one pilot, issuing them show cause notices, uh, taking them off the flight schedule duty rosters. But Air India has come into the spotlight for not filing a police complaint until 
just this week. The crew also elected not to summon law enforcement upon landing. The woman also has accused the crew of being, and I'm quoting here, deeply unprofessional and said that they were not proactive in managing a very sensitive and traumatic situation. The Air India officials now say that the crew of the flight has been asked to explain the handling of the incident after widespread shock and disgust after the story went public and the aviation regulator the director general of civil aviation the dgca has now warned of strict action if airline staff fail to act against passengers who are unruly or behave inappropriately now some uh, business news speaking on the tv show aapki adalat gautam adani asia's richest industrialist has taken on a wide range of questions from his group's bank loans and infrastructure projects to charges of receiving preferential treatment from the prime minister modi government to the repealing of the farm laws in detail the aapki adalat special episode will air at 10 am and 10 pm on india tv on sunday practical life ke andar the world's third richest man gautam adani has told india tv in an exclusive interview that criticism of his fortune being fueled by his close links to prime minister modi stands disproved because he works with a slew of opposition ruled states jo bhi sarkar thi usne aapko madad kiya isiliye log kehte hain na ki gujarat mein chiman bhai keshu bhai narendra bhai sabke bhai gautam bhai ki gujarat ki government industries friendly hai to aisi baat nahi hai ki ye adani ke liye koi special favor ho raha hai jahan bjp ki sarkar hai wahi aapko zyada project milte hain aaj hum 22 state ke andar kaam kar rahe hain aur sab jagah bjp ki sarkar nahi hai mr adani added i want to tell you that you can never get any personal help from modi ji you can speak to him about policies in the national interest but when a policy is framed it is for all not only for the adani group mr adani also said there's a misperception about his multi billion dollar group being heavily leveraged leaving banks and the savings of ordinary people vulnerable In the last 7 to 8 years our income has gone up by 24% while our loans have increased by 11%. Our assets are four times our borrowings. Mr Dani explained in the 90 minute show that he believes that opposition leader Rahul Gandhi's repeated allegations of crony capitalism against him are just part of the business of politics. He cited the example of Rajasthan which is governed by Mr Gandhi's Congress party referring to his 68000 crore rupee investment in the desert state investment is our normal program i had gone to the rajasthan investor summit at the invitation of the chief minister ashok gehlot later even rahul gandhi ji praised our investment in rajasthan i know rahul gandhi's policies are not anti development Mr Adani said critics who say his relationship with Prime Minister Modi has yielded a windfall overlook the fact that his success began when the Congress was in charge of the country. I got three big breaks in my life. First in 1985 during Rajiv Gandhi's rule when exim policy allowed our company to become a global trading house. Second in 1991 when PB Narasimha Rao and Dr Manmohan Singh opened up the economy and we entered into public private partnership mode and third during narendra modi's 12 year long rule in gujarat i can say with pride that it was a very good experience in the last year mr dani's wealth has grown more than that of any other billionaire his group is worth 200 billion dollars and includes green energy ports mines airports and huge infrastructure projects We did not get a single project without bidding. Our Adani group has this philosophy of not touching any project without bidding, whether it is a port, an airport, roads or a powerhouse. There's not a single allegation that we managed bidding. Even Rahul Gandhi has not leveled any allegation about tampering with the bidding process, he said. When asked to disclose his formula for success, Mr Adani kept it simple. गौतम भाई भगवान से तो सब मांगते हैं कि थोड़ा हमें भी दे दे लेकिन लगता ऊपर वाला सिर्फ आपकी सुनता है बिजनेस और प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ के अंदर एक ही फॉर्मूला काम आती है और वो है मेहनत मेहनत और मेहनत बहुत सारे लोग ये कहते हैं कि अडानी का बलून फटा तो सारे बैंक बर्बाद हो जाएंगे वो किसी का पैसा अनसिक्योर्ड नहीं है 
तो ये गुब्बारा उड़ता रहेगा कभी फटेगा नहीं इंडिया जब तक आगे बढ़ता रहेगा ये गुब्बारा आगे आगे चलता रहेगा All right the other big story caste based head count begins in Bihar and in the first phase which will be over by the 21st of January the number of all households in the state will be counted now terming the caste based head count as a historic step the deputy chief minister Tejasvi Yadav has said that the exercise will provide scientific data for carrying out welfare schemes for weaker sections of society the opposition BJP disagrees The first round of two-phase caste-based socio-economic survey has begun in Bihar. Five lakh surveyors have started counting all households. The second stage that begins in March will involve collection of data of people of all castes, sub-castes, and religions. ये कहा गया है कि एक-एक जगह पर जा करके सब की आर्थिक स्थिति भी देखिए क्योंकि हम लोग जो करना चाहते हैं तो उसके साथ साथ आर्थिक स्थिति का तो जब किसी की आर्थिक स्थिति परिवार की खराब है तो इसका पूरा का पूरा भी आकलन न हो जाएगा द कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी अराउंड दिस इश्यू इज इंट न्यू नीतीश कुमार लेट जे डी यू हैड शार्प डिफरेंसेज विद फॉर्मर एल आई बीजेपी ऑन दिस वन ऑफ द रीजन लीडिंग टू नीतीश कुमार वॉक आउट बट ऑल्सो एन इश्यू दैट री यूनाइटेड जे डी यू विद इट्स करंट एल आई आर जे डी टूडे अगेन इट वॉज अ वॉर ऑफ वर्ड बिटवीन द रूलिंग अलायंस एंड द बीजेपी आप बिहार को जब विकास की गति बढ़ानी है तो आप सत्ता प्राप्ति के लिए फिर एक बार बिहार के वातावरण को प्रदूषित करना चाहते हैं बिहार में अशांति लाना चाहते हैं उन्माद पैदा करना चाहते हैं इसलिए पहले पूरा विजन बनाइए आप जान ही रहे हैं भाजपा जो है गरीब विरोधी है ये लोग नहीं चाहते थे कि जाति जनगणना जो है वो हो पूरी कोशिश इन लोगों ने की कि किसी भी प्रकार से जो सही आंकड़े हैं लोगों के पास पेश ना हो सके In fact caste based count has been a major issue in Bihar politics with Nitish Kumar's JDU and all constituents of the Maha Gathbandhan long demanding that the exercise be undertaken at the earliest the Congress led UPA government at the center had agreed to conduct the exercise at the national level in 2010 and begun the process but when BJP came to power the party claimed the data was flawed with Manish Kumar in Bihar Sneha Koshi for NDTV An election fever is heating up in Tripura where the assembly elections are likely to take place in the last week of February or the first week of March in 2018 the BJP's win ended 25 years of left rule in the CPM now says it's open to an opposition alliance the, meanwhile there's a new player the All India Trinamool Congress led by the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee is also looking to make a mark in Tripura this time round in its bid to become a national party <laughs> Opposition parties in Tripura intensifying their campaigns hopeful after five from ruling BJP and three from IPFT quit the ruling alliance in last one year and joined various opposition parties CPIM now not ruling out an alliance of opposition parties hoping to overturn the humiliating 2018 defeat except TMC all other political parties are willing to defeat BJP so how this could be worked out how this could be materialized how that is a positive alternative could be uh, that is uh, presented before the people sensing a tough fight the ruling bjp has sounded the poll bugle with home minister and bjp stop gun amit shah himself launching two rath yatras that will cover almost all the 60 constituencies by mid january bjp along with li ipft won in 2018 ending almost three decades of communist rule aaj uh, चाहे तिपरा माथा हो सीपीआई हो कांग्रेस हो ये अंदर ही अंदर किंग कर्तव्य विमूढ़ में है और भारतीय जनता पार्टी ईमानदारी के साथ पूरे योजनाओं के साथ यहाँ की जनता के विकास के लिए विचार करती है In the 2018 Tripura polls the BJP and its ally IPFT actually won the election in a very comprehensive way winning 44 of the total 60 seats but ever since it has not been at all a easy political selling for the ruling alliance in fact at least eight ruling alliance MLAs have switched over 
to opposition ranks after leaving their respective parties including five from the BJP. And not only this, the BJP also had to change its chief minister perhaps to combat anti-incumbency which has been setting in fast and all these factors perhaps gives hope to the opposition parties. Just two years after a stunning win in Tripura, BJP had to come to terms with a shocking defeat. After a newly formed party, Tipramotha, led by former Congress leader and head of Tripura's royal family, Pradyut Manikya Debbarman, won the crucial tribal council elections in 2021 and is likely to split votes in the upcoming assembly polls. And TMC is also eyeing Tripura and likely to even see Mamta Banerjee campaigning in the state. And Tipramotha is fighting for the constitutional rights of the indigenous people without trying to take away rights of any other community. Halfway mark is 31. Why should we think that we are going to lose uh, uh, seats? Uh, we are going. We are confident of fighting all our 40 seats and winning. Those who are speaking about the Namul that they are the vote cutter, they have to see that in municipal elections throughout the state, the Namul Congress was this was in second position. Congress vote share was less than two percent in Tripura. In Tripura, the rebel factor likely to play a key role, like the recent Himachal Pradesh Assembly polls. Firebrand Congress MLA Shudip Roy Burman was once with TMC and in 2018 went to BJP. Despite being a high-profile BJP minister in Tripura, he quit the party after an ugly fallout with a former BJP CM Biplav Dev. It was the desire of the common people prior to 2018 elections that we should defeat the CPM at any cost. They believe that BGP will be able to defeat, but so I, so much is the, uh, you can say, aggression of the BGP and uh, the fickleness of the BGP that has made the people ponder. The dates of the assembly polls are expected by next week. In 2018, BGP had secured close to 44% vote share for its historic victory, eating into much of Congress vote bank, not leaving even one seat for Congress. This year, Neither BJP nor the opposition taking this for granted. In Agartala, Ratnadeep Chaudhary for NDTV.